So hi, Microbe Hunter here, and today for a change, I'm not going to answer questions of uh, some of my viewers, but rather I'd like to give you a short tutorial on how you can improve the videos that you make using your microscope. And today, I'm specifically, I'm going to show you how you can make very smooth pans using uh, your microscope. Well, very smooth pans are sometimes difficult to achieve. Um, of course, you can always try to turn the knob of your mechanical stage while you move uh, the slide and then you can take a video of that. And this pan will then kind of give you the impression or give the viewer the impression about size and scale. But there is a problem uh, when turning uh, the mechanical uh, stage here. And that is, is uh, it's uh, almost impossible to turn it in a completely smooth way. Usually there are always some kind of irregularities that you might see. Um, and uh, this might distract a little bit. Um, and uh, sometimes uh, it's, yeah, as a matter of fact, I even considered uh, to attach a small stepper motor to my mechanical stage and then to have some kind of an electronic control so that it actually turns, uh, the, the motor should turn the mechanical stage knobs for me to give it a really smooth uh, yeah, movement but uh, that was actually way too complicated and it's also not necessary so today i'm going to show you how you can use a digital technique using uh, two pieces of free software um, i've got the links below and uh, it's pretty straightforward uh, but yeah uh, you need to know how to do that um, you need the program ms ice uh, ice stands for image composite editor this is a panorama software and also I like to use a lot uh, the program DaVinci Resolve. As a matter of fact, that's the video editing program that I'm using right now to uh, make these videos here, to edit these videos. Both are free programs and both have uh, a very, a very powerful and functional programs. Um, and uh, the combination of both will allow you to make those, make very smooth pans. And I'm not going to be using an image stabilizing because even that would not be perfect enough. So I'm not using image stabilizing, but rather I'm using Using a built-in function using keyframes um, I'll explain later. Now this video I made by simply turning the knob of the mechanical stage and as you can see it's not entirely smooth. I tried to rotate it in a very smooth way but of course that's difficult to do. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. Um, I videotaped it in any case, well of course it didn't use a videotape but uh, rather I recorded it uh, using my DSLR camera using some old vocabulary here so I'm still stuck in the 1980s with a videotape but in any case I'm going to be processing uh, this uh, video later on using um, a software that I call uh, that is called MS ICE image composite editor um, here I opened the program and I'm simply dragging and uh, dropping the video the, in this case an mp4 video directly into the software now what the software is going to do is it's going to extract the individual frames um, of this video um, and uh, I'm simply click on stitch or you can click uh, the next button and what the program is going to do it's going to extract the frames and it's going to assemble a panorama image. This means it's going to create a so-called a stitched uh, image, a quite large one. It does take a couple of minutes uh, and uh, of course I'm now fast forwarding the video, but this is what I got. Um, you see that uh, it's, uh, because I was only moving uh, the stage into one axis, uh, I'm getting a very long image. It's uh, because the camera was not, not perfectly aligned, it's not, uh, yeah, it's a little bit skewed. This does not matter. I'm not going to crop it. I have the possibilities here. But uh, I'm simply going to then add a panning uh, that follows uh, yeah, the direction of the, of the image later on. So I'm just uh, not going to uh, do anything here and I'm going to simply export uh, the image. So I click uh, the next button here and here I now have the possibility to adjust the quality. I always go with the highest quality which is 100% uh, percent. and uh, I choose a file name and I simply export the picture to disk. I already have two others here. I'm simply going to call it stitched, it exports it and then I essentially am finished um, and I can uh, close uh, the program. Now um, the good thing about uh, MS ICE is, is that uh, it uh, is uh, also optimized for planar images. So it's not about simply making pan panorama images when you're rotating the camera around a, yeah, from a fixed point, but it's also by horizontal movement. Now this is the second program, it's called DaVinci Resolve. It's a video editing program, it's a professional video editing program. I have to start off by creating a new project. Um, yeah. 
and uh, I like the program because it is not only professional but it's free of charge and also extremely stable and it gives me a lot of these features uh, that, it was, uh, that I need. I'm importing now the picture uh, from MS Ice, the one, the JPEG that I saved and uh, um, it's basically uh, part of uh, the video right now and I can of course uh, expand the timeline a little bit. Of course nothing changes, it's simply the picture, the photograph that is um, imported and now I can um, add a range of video effects. Um, there is a red vertical line which is now right on the left side. I can move it to a different place as well. Um, and uh, this uh, red line, uh, this pointer, yeah, I'm going to move all the way to the beginning. Um, and uh, I'm going to turn on the so-called the inspector and uh, I can now zoom in. So there it says here, I zoom, uh, yeah, and I can drag it and I can zoom in until the picture fills the complete, uh, yeah, the complete width uh, of the video. I'm also going to reposition it. I can change the X and the Y position so I can yeah, shift the picture back and forth. And I'm right now at the beginning on the first uh, frame. So notice that the red line um, yeah, is, is on the, yeah, I'm zooming out now a little bit. And uh, what I'm going to do uh, next is, is uh, I have to then um, yeah, determine uh, the correct starting position and I'm now going to set so-called keyframes. I'm click clicking here in the, the little uh, diamonds there turn red. So this means that uh, these settings are now going to rem be remembered. I will then move uh, the red uh, yeah, pointer all the way to the end. Um, and uh, yeah, it says nothing to in inspect. I have to go back one frame. So I have to click the left arrow until the inspector again reappears. And now I'm going to determine the end position. So I'm, I'm moving the Y position, yeah, I'm changing it so I'm moving all the way down. Um, I have to reposition also the horizontal position and uh, yeah, that's the end position. Um, I can also change the zoom factor if I want to do that. Um, everything is possible here. Um, and I'm clicking again the red diamonds here on the end uh, because I want to set this as a key frame. Yeah, so I'm simply trying to find the optimum position right now. Yeah, and I can zoom in and out and I can shift the image back and forth um, until I have uh, the right, all of the right settings until I'm satisfied. Yeah, again, the keyframes are set here um, and uh, basically um, I'm pretty much finished right now. You can now see when I move the, uh, the red pointer, then it will actually transition all the way through. And uh, I'm now able to export uh, this uh, file as an mp4 file and then I have a video um, so and this is going to be perfectly smooth and uh, yeah and much better than if I were to simply use uh, yeah, the mechanical stage so I have to go to the export settings I want to export it for YouTube I have to type in the proper file name of course um, yeah and uh, I'm changing this to, to mp4 I have to also the sound, well, there is not going to be any sound. Yeah, I add it to the render queue and I'm going to start the rendering process and then it will export uh, a video. It's actually quite quick. I have a fast computer as well. Yeah, and I'm finished. Yeah, and then um, I basically have a video, an MP4 video, and this is how it looks like. You see the movement is extremely smooth um, and uh, it also follows a little bit the, the skewed image because uh, as you've seen at the beginning it was not completely straight that's fine yeah. and yeah it's much better this way so I recommend this uh, over um, doing it uh, the mechanical way just let the computers uh, do the work let the computer do the work for you okay um, yeah let's uh, try something more I just want to show you a few more nice uh, little uh, tricks here so um, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to go at the very end again um, and uh, it's also possible to add a, a rotation. So notice that I have set again a keyframe. I'm rotating the, the image, the end point right now. Um, I have to resume the whole thing to make sure that it fills uh, the full image. Yeah, the keyframes are, were set. Uh, and uh, now I do not only have a pan, uh, but I also have uh, yeah, a rotation added to the whole thing. Um, I do the same thing. I export everything again, um, just as I've done before. And then I also have a video made this way. And these are of course effects that you cannot do just using um, your microscope alone because of course you do not have a continuous zoom in a microscope. Um, so this can really uh, make uh, also static images that you've taken with a microscope uh, appear very interesting and maybe more engaging. So let's have a look how this looks like. Maybe it is a little bit fast 
but look, I'm not only panning, but I'm also zooming in. And there is also a slight rotation added right now. Of course, uh, this is a very practical way of uh, making videos uh, significantly more interesting. So now you can actually see that I'm probably zooming in a little bit too much because uh, it's starting to appear, appear a little bit blurry. So I'm already in empty magnification here. Yeah, this is also another possibility, not uh, zooming at all, but simply giving it a rotation. So instead of rotating the camera, I simply allow the computer program to do the rotation. Yeah, there's also a possibility here. Um, I like to zoom in because, of course, this is uh, something that allows uh, you to emphasize certain things. That's also a fun one. I'm simply adding a, a normal rotation first, and then I do a very quick zoom. Yeah, so there are basically endless possibilities here. Um, so I recommend that you take static images and then do all of the movements later on. So I think that's uh, enough for today. I hope uh, this video was useful for you to consider subscribing to this channel if you like it or liking the video. Um, I would also like to thank, of course, as always, my supporters uh, that uh, are making videos like these possible. I wish you happy microbe hunting as always and uh, see you around next time. Bye-bye.